the current iteration of the process to recognise Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples in the constitution began in earnest at the election in 2010 where there was unanimous support from the political parties for this broad concept. We are now in the latter part of 2014 with the act of recognition due to lapse in around six months time. We've had the expert panel, we've had a joint select committee convene, lapse and be reconvene, a panel to review the act of recognition and it seems for all of this we were only one preliminary report closer to the model for recognition being released which undoubtedly will require another round of consultation. Of course consultation is ultimately important but with well established multi-party support for recognition it's time to shift the emphasis of this consultation from the contents of a report to the model that will be put to the people in that referendum. The journey to recognition is doing a great job at raising awareness about the need for constitutional recognition. Having signed up over 216,000 Australians, the campaign has hit the road in my, in my own home state in Queensland in July this year with scheduled visits to communities such as Weepy, Yarrabah, Hopevale and even my hometown Rockhampton. The journey began in Melbourne in May last year and has since then covered more than 20,000 kilometres by foot, bike, four-wheel drive, kayak and paddleboard across the Northern Territory, Western Australia, Victoria and South Australia. Involved over 130 communities and more than 10,500 Australians. This thing keeps moving. <laughs> now it's sinking. <laughs> Sorry, guys. You just fade. Right? I get in the zone. However, despite this groundswell, I'm perplexed when thinking about the timelines for the referendum and get a little bit more, a little bit dismayed when I hear it might not happen till 2017. The reasoning with this thinking is that 2016 is an election year and it's best not to confuse a general election with an important issue that will be the subject of this referendum. And because of the sunset clause in February next year, the act of recognition will lapse and there goes our parliamentary recognition of us. It's in this context I call upon Parliament to move forward on this issue with the same spirit and enthusiasm which with, with which it started. Readily identifying a model will mean the public, particularly Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities, will have a greater opportunity to know what they are endorsing and what I call the pro debate proper can begin. This clarity will also maximise the opportunity to build on the existing momentum behind the campaign that is necessary. This may also mean considering a revised time frame for the referendum itself, taking into account the work that has already been done and the work still to do, it is my belief that a more realistic timetable that avoids the election issue but allows maximum support to be gathered around this by the public is the end of 2015. This time frame has also been supported by constitutional expert George Williams, who has indicated that now, uh, that now that the interim report has identified concrete options for reform, that the government should move the debate forward by indicating a willingness to hold a referendum in 2015. A failure to do so, he says, may mean the momentum built up by campaigns such as Recognise may be lost and that waiting also risks the issue of becoming mired in the politicking as the 2016 federal election approaches. Maintaining multi-party support is a vital element to the quest for constitutional recognition. However, so too is the support from the broader Australian community and as all parties acknowledged, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples themselves. We can't afford to have the course for recognition burdened by complacency and administrative processes that eat up time, energy and enthusiasm. We must remember the purpose we all started with here, the rightly acknowledging the first peoples of this country 
and removing the opportunities to racially discriminate against anyone. But if we are to emulate in any way the success of the 1967 referendum or go further in improving the lives of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples and their relationship with non-Indigenous Australians, we need to get this right. It is shocking to me that in 2014 we are still a country that has ties to our racist past of the darker periods in our nation's history such as the White Australia policy that had its core, at its core the destruction of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander families, communities and culture. Australia no longer stands for these attitudes. By recognising Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples and removing discrimination, we are sending a powerful message about the way we wish to see ourselves as a nation. We are saying that we truly believe in equality, in a fair go and in non-discrimination for all Australians. We are saying that we truly respect and honour the 60,000 years of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander history that is currently missing from our nation's founding document. By supporting these changes, I think we are honouring the many thousands of people that have come before us who have fought for change and equal treatment. From the diggers that have fought to be recognised for their service in Australia's war efforts and entitlements that should have followed to the many Australian are Aboriginal men and women who were denied proper wages for work as they did the work they did as part of government's policies of exclusion. The entire lives of people like Jimmy Wavehill, an Aboriginal stockman from the infamous Wavehill walk off, or Peter Coppin, who with many others led the Pilbara pastoral strike of the 1940s, were dedicated to demanding equal treatment for equal work regardless of race. The issue of constitutional recognition asks the same questions of all Australians. To demand equal treatment and in, end the discrimination faced by Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people in the 21st century. I've always said I will argue the case for recognition from an unashamedly emotional perspective, as I think there'll be enough experts arguing from legal and political perspectives. Because this quest goes to the heart of the nation. It's not a referendum about changing the retiring age of judges or changing electoral cycles. It's about us all as Australians having a say in the kind of country we want to live in and what we want to stand for in an ever increasing globalised environment. But ultimately, it's about recognition. Anyone who knows me knows that I'm a glass half full fella. I'm an optimist sometimes to the point of being called Pollyanna. I've said recently about waking up on a Sunday morning, not too far away hopefully, after resoundingly passing the referendum the day before. We will be waking up to a new nation, one which has come to terms with its past has passed the test of maturity and has give, given proper meaning to the old Aussie fair go. It is really about rights, relationships and responsibilities. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to close tonight with a poem. One penned by one of my heroes, Wujuru Nunakal, a Kwandamuka woman from Minjeraba or Stradbroke Island in Moreton Bay in south, south east Queensland. No one I know would ever accuse Wujuru of being Pollyanna. But in her poem, Song of Hope, she wrote of such a day. It started, Look up, my people. The dawn is breaking. The world is waking to a bright new day. When none defame us, no restriction tame us, nor colour shame us, nor sneer dismay. Now brood no more on the years behind you, the hope assigned you. Shall the past replace when a juster justice, grown wise and stronger, points the bone no longer at the darker race? So long we waited, bound and frustrated, till hate be hated and cast disposed. Now light shall guide us. No gold denied us, and all, 
all doors open that were long closed. See, plain the promise, dark freedom lover, night's nearly over, and though long the climb, new rights will greet us, new mateship meet us, and joy complete us in our new dream time. To our fathers' fathers, the pain, the sorrow. To our children's children, the glad tomorrow. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.